Hi, this is Bart Polson, and this video is for Behavioral Science Statistics, and in it, we're looking at the first online quiz for Chapter 10, which is on the analysis of variance. First question in this quiz is, the analysis of variance, also called ANOVA or ANOVA, is the preferred inferential test when you need to A, compare the means of three or more groups, B, compare the scores of a group of participants before and after manipulation, C, find the associations between two quantitative variables, or D, standardize all of the scores. The answer to this one is A, compare the means of three or more groups. Um, let's take a look, quick look at the other ones. Compare the scores of a group of participants before and after manipulation. Well, that's when you would want to use a, um, a t-test, a repeated measures t-test, because you have the same group at time one and time two. Find the association between two quantitative variables. That's when you would want to use correlation or regression. We're going to talk about that in, the, in a later chapter. Or D, standardize all of the scores. Well, that's just a, that's just z-scores, and that's something we covered uh, quite a while ago. But let's take a look at this. Compare the means of three or more groups. The analysis of variance, um, there's a several versions of it, but one of them, which is called the one-way analysis of variance, lets you compare several different groups. The t-test, uh, the two-sample t-test lets you compare two uh, samples, but this lets you compare two, three, or more. And what I have here is a uh, picture that shows four population distributions for uh, four different regions, north, south, east, and west. And what you see is that the north has a much lower mean, the south and the west are identical, and the east is slightly higher than all the others. And the analysis of variance would allow you to compare these four means at once and find out if there are any statistically significant differences among them. Okay, the second question. If an ANOVA is statistically significant, what does that mean? And the choices are A, the variance of the group means is less than zero, or the variance of the group means is equal to zero, or the group means are all different from one another, or the variance of the group means is greater than zero. Well, these are all very similar to each other. But in this case, the correct answer is D, the variance of the group means is different or is greater than zero. Um, just very quickly before we take a look at the answers, um, A, it's, it's not possible for variance to be negative. And so A, the, the idea that the group means have a variance of less than zero just isn't a possibility. That they're equal to zero, well, that would be only in the absolute null case where all of the means were identical, in which case it would definitely not be statistically significant. Uh, the group means are all different from one another. That is one way to get a statistically significant finding. But if you have, say, for instance, five means, it may be that four of them are similar and one of them is different. Um, or two of them are same as each other, two of the others are same as each other, and one is different. And um, there's a lot of different ways to get a statistically significant analysis of variance. And D, the idea here is that the variance of the group means is greater than zero. That's the one universally true case. And again, let's take a look at how it works. You calculate an F statistic. That's the uh, test statistic for the analysis of variance. And it's equal to the MS, which stands for mean squares between groups, divided by the mean squares within groups. And the between groups is very similar to the difference between the means from the t-test. And the MS within is a lot like the standard error. And on the right side here, I show you actually how it's calculated, where MS really is the variance, because as you see, it's, it's equal to the sum of squares divided by the degrees of freedom. And that is equal to the sum of the square of each score minus the mean divided by the degrees of freedom. And anyhow, so that's a variance. And so you want to see if the variance of the group means is greater than zero. All right, third one. What is the symbol for the test statistic in the analysis of variance? Is it P, T, Z, or F? Well, as I showed you just a second ago, it's F. And here's the same formula. It's also called the F test. Uh, the analysis variance is sometimes referred to that because the statistic that you get is F. The same way with a uh, you know t-test, you get a t, um, and it's simply equal to the ratio of the mean squares or the variance between divided by the mean squares of the variance within. And um, anyhow, it's F. And by the way, that stands for Fisher. Sir Ronald Fisher is the guy who came up with the analysis of variance, and that's where the F comes from. <coughs> Number four, what is the most common measure of effect size for the analysis of variance? The choices are Cohen's D, or Z, or eta squared, or the standard error. <coughs> the answer here is eta squared. Now, 
Cohen's D is one we talked about before that's really good for comparing um, two means, either a sample to a population mean or two sample means to each other. But the analysis of variance, you can have more than two, in which case Cohen's D doesn't really apply anymore. The, a z-score is really good if you are comparing two means and you have the population standard deviation so you can use this, uh, the, um, the standard normal distribution. But again, that only applies for a maximum of two. Uh, the standard error is simply a, a part of the equation to get a z-score or a t-test. Um, and it's not, a, it's not a measure of effect size. But let's take a look at eta squared. Now, eta squared... Eta is a Greek letter, and you see here it looks like an N. It looks like a little cursive N. Uh, also kind of looks like an upside down mu. Uh, and it's squared because it's based on variance, which is squared deviations. Now, in this one, you see I've got a, a subscript there that's P, and that's because that's for partial. And the reason for that is you can actually have more than one uh, eta squared for an analysis of variance if you have if you're doing a two-way analysis of variance and you have uh, one main effect, another main effect, and an interaction, you actually have three partial eta squareds, one for each of those. But right now, we're just going to put this down here. And um, the eta squared is, is simply equal to the sum of the squares for the effect, that is the difference between the group means, divided by the sum of the squares of the effect or group means, plus the total error, <coughs> excuse me, the error of sum of squares, which is everything other than the effect. So the, actually the bottom here is the total sum of squares. And so it's a proportion also. It goes from 0 to 1. And it tells you the difference between the group means accounts for what percentage of the total uh, variation in the scores. <coughs> okay, finally, in order to calculate eta squared, you first need to know, A, the sum of squares, SS, the shape of the distribution, whether the F-test is statistically significant, or Cohen's D. Well, as you just saw in the last question, the answer is A, the sum of squares. <coughs> now, the shape of the distribution is kind of irrelevant. Um, it's nice to have normal distributions. That's true for almost everything we do. But that's not a, that's not a requirement for calculating A to squared. Also, whether the F test is statistically significant, you can calculate it even when it's not significant. Um, sometimes you do that just to say how big the difference was. And the reason for that is because <coughs> eta squared is not affected by sample size. It's a generalized measure of effect size. But the F test is affected by sample size. And so you can have a big effect, but if you have a very small sample, you can still have a non-significant finding. So anyhow. And then Cohen C, that's just a, a different measure of effect size. It's irrelevant here. And again, <coughs> Here's the formula for eta squared, and you see that we have the SS, the sum of squares, on the top and on the bottom. Uh, we have it for the effect, which is the difference between the group means, and we have the error, which is everything other than the difference between the group means. Anyhow, that's it for the first quiz.